Hey everybody, I hope to make what's a quick video here today. I want to talk about powering our video production electronics and some of the options that are out there to do that. In the last few years we've had some pretty cool products that have been introduced, sometimes called solar generator or power station, any number of battery generator, like any number of names that are when you see these things, but I want to kind of cover what those are and whether they will actually work for video production systems and also compare and contrast to uh, traditional UPS. So let's dive in. Uh, first thing, I want to apologize for any fan noise coming from the flight pack that I have here on the, on, the, on the desk. So if you're hearing that in the background, you have to ignore that for a little bit. But I actually wanted to have some equipment plugged in some of these things and show you what it's like to use them. So first thing I want to talk about is going to be traditional UPS. And this is an older one. This is, I don't think this is even a current model, but this is one from APC. Uh, it's called the Backups ES550. This is sort of a medium capacity in this form factor. Um, this is what I used to use with my fly pack. Uh, this is definitely older technology and something that I probably wouldn't necessarily recommend today um, for a few reasons. And um, first of all, the capacity on these things just is not very high. It's not very much. For in the, this particular example, I've got this unit and I've got it hooked up to my fly pack and it will only run this fly pack for maybe 10 minutes. Maybe. And that's when it was brand new, fresh battery. It's not anymore. Uh, this thing is well past its prime at this point. And lucky if I get like five minutes of runtime off of this thing for my fly pack. So not a lot. Uh, one of the main issues with these is they use lead acid batteries, sort of like what we have in our cars. Super old technology, it does not have a lot of capacity and you can only use about half the capacity of the battery. Uh, when you run it down. Like if you run it down any more than that, it basically kills the battery. So these things will stop outputting power when your battery capacity reaches about half. So kind of, yeah. In addition to that, um, when power goes out, this thing will start beeping on you like crazy. Uh, you can mute it, but it's gonna drive you nuts. So. Not necessarily the best idea for powering a video production system. And I don't want to do too much fear mongering, but I did have an ATEM switcher lock up on me once upon a time when a UPS kicked over on the battery. That very quick change in the input voltage on the ATEM caused it to freeze, caused it to lock up. Um, so something to watch out for. Uh, it's something to consider when looking at these. But anyway, bottom line is I don't think I would necessarily recommend a UPS for using with a video production system. I know a lot of people do, but in this day and age, we've got a lot better options out there. So let's take a look at some of those. Now, this particular, um, well, they, call, they originally called them solar generators, which is kind of a weird name because they're not really generators. But this is the, one of the first ones, ones I invested in. This is a Jackery. This is a 240 watt, if I remember right. And... Uh, yeah, this is the Jackery Explorer 240. This is several years old now. I'm not even sure they even sell this one anymore. Um, these work really well for my cameras, but this one doesn't put out enough power for my fly pack. So kind of useless for that particular scenario. But these do work really, really well for powering cameras. In fact, earlier today, I did a job for the 4th of July where this is what we did for cameras. We didn't bother running uh, power cables from my trailer out to the cameras. We just used these. And with cameras being... Uh, camera, camera converter, and monitor, and yeah, I think that was all. We plugged, the, plugged each of those setups into one of these jackeries, and after three hours of running cameras, the battery had only gone down by, I think it was 15%. I think we ended at 85%. Anyway, so worked really well for that. But again, this one's not big enough for running this. Now, I would not recommend these anymore. Technology has improved quite a lot. And unfortunately, the Jackery brand has not really kept up with the changes that are going on. So there are some better options that are out there uh, now that uh, were not available just a handful of years ago. So let's take a look. Okay, uh, this next one I want to look at, this is from EcoFlow. This is the River 2 Max. This is one of their smaller ones. Uh, this uh, capacity on this one is 500 and, no, yeah, 512 watt hours. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so this one does provide enough power to run my flight pack and a computer and a monitor, and you probably even do a couple of cameras off of it as well without any without any trouble whatsoever. 
And let's see, what's the runtime say there? It says we're going to get about three hours um, for the flight pack um, off of this. So that's enough to do some events, you know, with just the battery alone. So it's something to, something to consider there. I, I have a bigger one I'm bringing out here in a moment. But one of the things I like about the EcoFlows is they are insanely fast at charging. And there's some other brands that, are, that do as well. But these are, they are insanely fast at charging. This one charges over 600 watts. And uh, with, this, uh, with, with the, this 512 watt hour battery, that means it charges from completely dead to fully charged in like almost right at an hour, a little under an hour. So pretty impressive, uh, especially some of the, compared to some of the older ones like that Jackery I showed you. That one takes four hours to charge. And even though it's low capacity, it still takes four hours to charge, which is just kind of crazy. But fortunately, yeah, it's they've gotten so much better. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this particular one for doing this kind of a setup just because the runtime only is a few hours. But for running cameras or a laptop or anything like that, these things are actually pretty nifty. These things do have pure sine wave output, so they are safe to use on electronics. And these aren't technically classified as, as UPSs, un uninterruptible power supplies. They're more classified as emergency power supplies. Um, let me, I'll, I'll plug this thing in first of all. And we'll, we'll see it switch over to, there you go. So it's both charging you can see the, uh, the numbers here. So the top number is incoming power for charging and then uh, plus charging plus output power and the bottom is total output power. So right now it's outputting 144 watts to run my fly pack and it's pulling in over 700 watts to run the fly pack and to charge the battery. But what I wanna do here is I want to actually unplug it and make sure that the fly pack stays running without, re without rebooting and it should. Yep, bingo. So we're good there. Uh, these, since they're not classified as UPSs, they're classified more as EPSs. The transfer time from AC to battery is a little bit longer. I think it's around 30 milliseconds on these. And a lot of electronics will handle that just fine, but not all of them will. So if you want to use something like this, make sure you buy it from somewhere that has a refund policy and actually test it with your equipment to make sure that when your power goes out, that it, your equipment is able to stay up and running as the device makes the transition from battery or sorry, from from AC power over to battery. So, uh, so far all the stuff I've tested has been just fine and so it has not been an issue, but there can be some equipment out there that doesn't handle that transition quite as smoothly. So, anyway, uh put this away and grab the next one. All right, the next one I want to talk about is this guy right here. This is EcoFlow Delta 2 and this thing's amazing. <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, this is a 1,024 watt hour capacity battery, which is pretty good, but the main thing that's most amazing about this thing is how much power it actually puts out. So this thing will run with an output of 1,800 watts continuously and surge it up to 2,700, I think it is. Um, so quite powerful, especially for one this size. It's, it's actually pretty teeny uh, physically, and it only weighs 27 pounds. So this one will run my fly pack for quite a while. And unplug that there. And so what do you have there? Well, it's still saying 99 hours. That's not actually correct. But uh, it'll, it'll figure it out here in a moment. So it's gonna, it'll, there we go. So it's gonna, it'll run this fly pack for about six hours and that's quite a lot. Um, this thing also has a pretty amazing charge circuit in it. Where it will charge its, its own battery in just over an hour. It will charge up to 1800 watts. Um, defaults to 1200, but you can adjust it in the app. You can charge up to 1800 watts. So I, I, yeah, you go from zero to 80% in, in about 40 minutes, um, assuming you have no load on it. But pretty amazing, pretty high capacity. This thing is even powerful enough that it will run my production trailer, which is pretty crazy. Uh, it'll, it'll only go for about a half hour, but it will do it. And it does it without complaining. It just works. Um, another reason I like this one so much is that it's become really affordable. So this normally sells for $9.99. EcoFo's got a sale going on right now where you can get it for $5.69. But... 
as of the time I'm filming this, it probably won't be able, they probably won't be able to get this out in time. But as of right this very moment in time, it's on sale on Amazon for four ninety nine. So basically half price. And again, this thing's pretty phenomenal. Um, I'll flip it around, and let you see some of the connections. This may take a little bit of doing with everything, but I'll we'll, we'll show you the, fir the front first. So. On the front, it has basically just USB ports. Uh, most of the connections are around back, so flip that around. There we go. Uh, no, you can't see it very well, but there there are um, AC inputs here, and there is a solar. Sorry, outputs and an AC input for charging up here. There's a solar or battery um, source for charging up there. And yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, also, there's 12 volt output down here at the bottom. This is your standard old school cigarette lighter style. And then two uh, 5520, 5521, I think is what it is. Right, yeah. So a couple of barrel, DC barrel jacks on there. Um, but again, one of the reasons I like this one is because um, it has the ability to connect a second battery which I have. And you're not really supposed to connect this while it's running, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So you just connect this cable onto the side. And that doubles the capacity, and just like that. So I now have 2,048 watt hours of capacity here. And again, it will charge at 1,800 watts. Um, so the two combined will charge under two hours, well, about two hours. And anyway, so I want to make it clear that this is not sponsored by EcoFlow. Uh, they have no idea who I am. I'm just a happy customer. I know you see videos for these things all over the place on YouTube. They do, they do sponsor a lot of channels, but again, they have, they have no idea who I am. There's no affiliation. Uh, just, I'm just a happy customer. So, um, Stepping up from this, they have a few other bigger models. So there's one called the Delta II Max, which is twice the capacity and some a little bit of additional power on on the uh, on the output, but not a ton. And the extra battery for the Delta II Max actually works with the Delta II. So if you want much longer runtime, that gives you a total of uh, 3072 watt hours of capacity on this guy right here. So I think that's probably a pretty darn good deal uh, considering that this thing actually outputs just as much power as your normal household outlet here in the United States by itself. You don't have to step up to one of the bigger ones to get that kind of capacity. Although if you do not, you need that kind of capacity, they do have bigger models available. They also have the uh, EcoFlow Delta Pro and they just announced the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3. And on top of that, there is a Pro Ultra that's even bigger. Those are those are getting into sizes where you can actually run your home, or at least some of the major components of your home. Definitely overkill for running a video production system like this. But anyway, so the two batteries combined, flight will run the fly pack and a laptop and a monitor for somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 hours. So a full full, full day of production just off of battery. Uh, then I'm recommending this not just as a way to run your equipment in situations where you don't have other power, like a generator or whatever, but as a backup. So somebody trips over one of your cables or you trip a breaker, you can put these things in line between your power source and your video equipment and get extended runtime quite a bit of extended runtime. So uh, these are going to give you way more runtime than a UPS. And they are, for the amount of power you're getting, far, far, far lighter. And I should also mention that all these EcoFlows that I've mentioned today are uh, use LFP batteries, so a lithium uh, iron phosphate. And those can go through a few thousand full charge cycles. So even if you were to fully discharge and recharge this thing every day, it would still run for, I think it's nine years, 
before your battery capacity would be reduced by 20% down to 80% of its original. So pretty cool. The, the slightly older ones that are used, used lithium ion, you get a few hundred charge cycles before you start seeing a noticeable drop in runtime. So these newer uh, LFP ones are quite a bit better about that uh, than some of the older ones. And certainly way better than the lead acid batteries that are used in a UPS. So anyway, but uh, yeah, that's gonna about do it for right now. So um, if you're gonna purchase one of these, I do appreciate you using the links that I provided here throughout the course of this video. That helps the channel a lot. It helps me to bring in equipment uh, to do reviews and demonstrations and training on. So very much appreciated when you do that. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I am trying to do video production related content about once a week. Uh, just recently I announced, or I did a video about audio and understanding some of the basic concepts of audio in terms of, well, eventually running audio for a video production. And the video hasn't gotten a lot of views, but those who have watched it have absolutely loved it. So if, if you're in the video production world and you wish to understand a little audio a little bit better, even if you think you already understand it fairly well, go back and watch that video. I do some pretty cool stuff with some custom software to demonstrate some of the principles. And I'll have other videos coming up where I start to talk about things like microphones and mixers and how to build a proper mix and all those other things. So great information. Uh, I'm one of those guys who says that audio is more important than video, and I truly believe that. So if you're a video producer and you aren't paying enough attention to your audio, maybe these videos will be something that will be worth watching. So, But I think it's going to about do it. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and have a great day.